In the previous modules, we explored one and two factor linear models and the analysis of variance techniques that allowed us to make inferences from our samples to the population. Now let's explore multi-factor experimental designs, that is, situations where we have more than two factors. Previously, I showed you the two factor linear model, and remember the interior component, excluding air, was simply a way of representing the different group means. That is, whatever combination of factors we had, the interior portion simply represented the decomposition of those group or condition means. We'll do the same thing for our three factor linear model, and really this extends to any kind of factorial model that we might encounter. Let's start with the model declaration, and then we'll see how to do these analyses in jump. We'll actually find that not much changes, except we will have more sources to investigate the statistical significance of. Starting with our model. In this case, since we'll have three factors, we'll be adding another subscript. I'm sorry for the notational complexity, but remember this is just bookkeeping, a way of keeping track which observations are a part of which factors or combinations of factors. So the Y score here is the YIJKL, which is the score on Y, now here it is, for the ith individual in the jth treatment of factor A, the kth treatment of factor B, and the lth treatment of factor C. All right, so we're going to decompose those Y scores on the basis of model components you've seen before. First, we have our grand mean, Y bar, dot, 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 the overall mean averaging over everybody in our sample. Plus, we'll have a group of main effects. So the main effects for factor A, that is the offsets, the AJs, the main effects for factor B, the offsets, BKs, and the main effects for factor C, the CLs. Each of those are offsets just like we saw before. The AJs will be the treatment offsets, ignoring the rest of the factor structure, just how much the factor A conditions differ from the grand mean. The same thing is true for B and for C. We'll next have a group of terms that represent the two-way interactions. Remember, in our two-factor linear model, we only had one interaction, the degree to which A effects depended on B, or the degree to which B effects depended on A. In a three-factor model, we'll actually have three interactions. The A, B, J, Ks, the degree to which A effects depend on B, or B effects depend on A, plus the A, C interaction terms, the degree to which A effects depend on the level of C, or the degree to which the effects of C depend on the level of A, so the A, C, J, Ls, and finally, the B, C interaction terms, the degree to which B effects depend on the level of C, or the degree to which the C effects depend on the level of B. These interactions, although we have more of them, can be interpreted in the exact same way, just the degree to which our model effects differ from a purely additive structure. So when we're decomposing the means, the degree to which we can't simply represent a pair of factor effects independently. Finally, in our three-factor model, we'll have one final term, the three-way interaction, the ABCJKLs. Now, this will take a little bit more time to think through, but an ABC interaction, this three-way interaction, can be interpreted in the same way as our two-way interactions. All interactions are really a measure of how much one factor's effects depend on the level of another factor. In this case, you can think of the three-way interaction as the degree to which a two-way interaction, let's say the AB interaction, depends on which level of factor C we're in. So this final term will capture all at once the degree to which the two-way interactions change across the levels of a third factor. And finally, to finish off our model, we have the air, so the residual E, I, J, K, L, the degree to which an individual in any of these combinations differ from their own condition mean. So this is our three-factor linear model. Notice it has a similar structure to all of our linear models, we just have a proliferation of different sources now we need to test. Notice we'll test the main effects, so we'll have three tests there, the main effect of A, B, and C. We'll have three tests of interactions, so the AB interaction, the AC interaction, and the BC interaction. And finally, we'll have a test of the three-way interaction. As we've done before, we'll perform these tests using the analysis of variance by forming mean squares for each of these comparisons. So for the overall effects of factor A, B, and C, we have the customary mean squares that are associated with each of those factors. Remember, the mean square for A, or B, or C is really a variance based on the treatment offsets associated with A, B, or C. 
For the two-way combinations, that is the two-way interactions, we'll have the three tests. So the FAB will be the mean square for the AB interaction divided by air. For the AC, we'll have the mean square for the AC interaction divided by air. And for the BC interaction, we'll have a mean square for BC divided by air. Finally, for the three-way interaction, we'll have a mean square associated with that final source, mean square for A, B, and C. Again, this will capture the degree to which any of the two-way interactions actually differ across the level of the third factor. This will be more clear once we get to analyzing data in Jump, but remember the structure of all these tests is really the same. We have a variance in the numerator that captures the offset variability, and the denominator is capturing our error variability. And by forming an F-ratio, we'll be able to test these effects in the exact same way. Each of these different F-tests will produce a p-value. So our job will be the same, to interpret the output and look to the p-values to determine whether we have evidence that in the population, whatever source we're dealing with actually has an effect on the outcome. To explore this analysis in Jump, we'll be using a slightly modified times to campus data set, in which we have four levels of route, the same ones we've seen before, four levels for the time of morning, the same four we saw before, and finally, five levels of day of week. This gives us a four by four by five factorial design.